the game. My heart is still beating. Oh my gosh. But we got to start off by talking about what the heck was that call with Zach Pascal? He was clearly not down. They waited for him to get up. He clearly didn't give himself up. He was trying to make a play. And then they knocked it out. I have no clue what those refs were thinking. Not calling that down because not, it didn't affect the game clearly at the end. But you got to make the right play because it could have been costly. And at the second part, during the game, I was rooting for the Bills. You know, I grew up going to Bills game. I'm from near Buffalo. You know, I picked them to go to the Super Bowl. I wanted the Bills to win. But part of me was feeling like, dang, I don't want to go Phil, want Phil Brewers to go out like that. And I wanted it to just end off to where, at least for Phillip Rivers, it wasn't in his control. His receiver just cost it. And that is what happened. It should have been over. But let's get to these Bills. The team I picked to go to the Super Bowl. And we saw just about everything from the Bills. We saw why I expect them to go to the Super Bowl. Why I have such high hopes for them. And then the things that, why I was saying this Colts game is going to be a really tough matchup for them. And the things that I'm a little worried about with these Bills because... We saw Josh Allen slinging that ball all around the field. After the first drive, he's pinned back in his own, his own territory. A lot of guys' first time in the playoffs, first time in front of a Buffalo crowd, it looked a little slow. And then once they got that Stephon Diggs of completion over the middle, it got cracked wide open. But still, throughout the game, and especially towards the end, you could see the one worry with these Bills, even before Zach Moss went out, but especially after, is that... In terms of handing the ball off to these running backs, these running backs are okay. They're reliable. You know, they did a good, Zach Moss did a good job holding on to that ball. That was almost a fumble. These, it's Devin Singletary, they're good, reliable backs, but they're not guys that you would give the ball to and expect them to end the game, ice the game. They're going to make run over guys, that they're going to miss a lot of tackles. They're just solid. They're not Jonathan Taylor like the Colts have, and that, that kind of came up in the last possession to where they were still trying to sling the ball all over the field, and, in, and at the end, Josh Allen almost blew the game with that fumble because that man loves taking risks. He was still trying to get out and throw that ball away. He put it on the ground in a situation where when you're in the field goal range up three, it's where you want to start. So look to hand it off and try and move the ball that way. So that's that can kind of came to bite those bills, but it all worked out. The first half, it was about special teams kill, killing the bills in the first half, you know. There was great kickoffs from Blake and Ship, putting it right in the corner to where the bills were having a tough time getting moving. They were pinning the bills back with those punts, This the possession where they were getting the ball field position all of that was going against the bills and then once it flipped to the second half probably the biggest thing of the game was bass knock it down that 53 yarder what was it 54 yarder it's not just a fish bass is more than a fish he is a kicker with a big leg and why i always say kickers are underrated they can tw- swing big games and if rodrigo blankenship just knocked down that chip shot We'd be talking about a game in overtime, and it would have been interesting. But that's not the only thing that the Colts messed up on. Going for it on that fourth down was pro- was not the right decision. They had a bad momentum move. They were moving backwards. You just had to take three the three points where you could get them. It was almost a scared move, feeling like, oh, I don't know how much we're, we're going to get back here, how many times we're going to get point, points. we got to try and get touched when we get down here. It came off as a little desperate, and it costed them. But more so than that even, because... I'm always I'm a fan of guys going for it and being aggressive. So I I can't kill him for that. What I can kill him for is when you get the ball inside the one yard line, you need to use what you've got. And Jonathan Taylor in that position, he's a top five back you want for that position. You can't have the ball inside the five yard line. They tossed it. I think I think it was to Jonathan Taylor that little scoop scoop pass, and then they gave it to him out of the gun. I think in that situation, you need to just line up in a goal line offense, hand the ball off to see what he could do, and which they did later. And then one of the times they tried putting Jacoby Brissett out there, I think it was the first time, first down, maybe second down on the goal line, which I get. I've seen Jacoby Brissett make some great plays on some fourth and shorts and some goal line situations. But when you're in the playoffs and they're putting every scouting department together and all the scouting together, you know what I'm saying, and they know when Jacoby Brissett's going in, it's obviously a quarterback sneak. I would think the first your first try would be, let's go to Jonathan Taylor. He's got us a touchdown already. I think they should have just handed the ball off to him there. 
But that was the one, because that was the one advantage that the Colts truly had, was that they could hand the ball off, give the ball to their running backs, and they can make things happen. And when they started coming back, I thought it was over when it was 24-10. A lot of that was Naheem Himes breaking those big runs. But there was, but in the passing game, those running backs, they did cost a little bit. Naheem Himes had a big drop. I believe it was on the last drive on a little dump off. Now, Jonathan Taylor had one big drop, and then he dropped another. So those running backs in the passing game, they did make some mistakes, but that was the one advantage, and the Colts did run the ball a lot more than the Bills in terms of handing it off, but they didn't use it enough when they needed to in that situation. For the Bills, Josh Allen, to throughout most of the quarters, he can cover up enough for running the football. They're not going to hand the ball off a ton, but Josh Allen... Oh, those quarter they they weren't ready for it. those design quarterback draws acting like we're gonna throw it run it up the middle the design draw where he was going towards the end zone toss it over to Noss and Docks aside from that Stefan Diggs man making those big plays we need to I think he dropped the first pass to him and then other than that he was spectacular Stefan Diggs Clearly the second best receiver in the NFL. I'd love to say first, but we, we need to give respect to Devontae Adams. That man is a dog and has been doing it for quite some time. But sandwich him right between Tyreek and Devontae Adams. He's the second best. Josh Allen, one of the best quarterbacks you want to have in these playoffs. And then he's got Gabe Davis to throw it to. Who, oh my gosh, on the sidelines. They were talking about, oh, it's close. I don't... To me, those were all clearly catches. Every single one of them. And people in the first half want to talk about Colts versus refs. To me... The, the Bills, there was a face mask on one of those returns that they didn't call. There were calls that went against the Bills, and you all saw at the end that clear fumble just went against the, the Bills. So really, the Bills got a worse end of the whistle, for sure. But other than that, they got Beasley to dump it down to, and then John Brown is a wild card. These Bills are looking great. Their defense made a lot of plays. They they messed up a lot in the second half, but in that last possession, it did what it had to do. Tredavious White, Matt Milano, Jermaine Edmonds, that defense is stacked. The only worry for me is running the ball in games where you're up towards the end of the game, handing off. We'll see if Zach Moss is going to come back healthy because without him, it's going to be even tougher. But let me know what y'all thought. Drop a comment, hit the like, and then subscribe. Please, yes, sir.